The key with Mike Tyson was that many people didn't realize that even though he packed a powerful punch, he didn't have enough stamina. So if you got past the first few rounds, you was basically his for the taking. Mind you, Mike Tyson has never been knocked out. So this is crazy. Buster Douglas does not know what he's about to do, but he's just trying with a little bit that he has. Around the 10th round, around the 10th round, Buster Douglas, he hits a swing, and Mike Tyson falls down. Mike Tyson, the person who usually knocks out everybody. This Mike Tyson who usually just demolishes everybody. That people is intimidated just in his interest. His guys, he knocks he gets knocked down. So they're waiting for him to come up. They're like, oh man, that's Mike Tyson. He's going to get up. He's going to get up. But nobody has never seen Mike Tyson this long in the fight. <laughs> Mike Tyson, he almost gets up. But he doesn't. Mm. Knocked out by Buster Douglas. First time by a little nobody. With the will that he had and the passion in his heart. And many times, that's the situation for us. Yes, yes. Satan is trying to snuff out yes, what yes, we can yes, do. Yes. He's always trying to snuff out, man, you can't do no better devotion. Man, you can't be a better Christian. Man, you can't do that. You can't get that right for your family. However, God has promised that if you resist the devil, give him just enough time, he'll flee. He'll be knocked out. And if you just wait, you will see a miracle with the little bit that you give for God. And that was the same situation with these people. 10,000 to 20,000 people, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way down to 50. Okay, you sit right here. Then you have to count 50 all the way up. You have to count 50 all over again. All these small little groups. And then passing out all this food. Man, I just got a little bit, but God is trying to do a lot. You just wait. Wait to see what God does. Because when God is cooking up something, man, he uses little in the kitchen. Yes, yes. Uses little in the kitchen. He cooks when you can. And he uses little in the kitchen. Third point. The third point. I told you guys to remember this dialogue between Jesus and the rest of the people because Jesus is talking about Moses, and so and these people hold Moses and regard them, regard him in their hearts. He calls Moses their hope. They think that Moses is their hope. That their only hope, the law, and all the stuff that he established is their only hope at this time. And so now Jesus does something. He flips the script. This is going on to Passover. This is commemorating the Exodus and everything like that from Egypt. And so Jesus does something. Jesus is at a desert place. Jesus is at a desert place. And we're looking at the bread and the loaves, the loaves of bread and the fishes. And many times we look at the loaves of bread and the fishes and we think that, oh man, you know, I don't know. Why is it not that much fish? You know, because now in all Western you know, society, we kind of say, man, the meat is the main course. However, at that time, the bread was the main course. If you had bread, it was good. And so this time, Jesus is here with this bread and it's multiplying at this time, right now, as we're going through in this story. And the people just had to already kind of like think back in their minds. Because this is going around Passover time. And this is reminding people of a Moses that was in the desert with a group of Israelites, and he had the bread called manna. Jesus is now in the desert with a group of Israelites, and he's now serving our bread. Jesus is telling these people, look, you think Moses is your hope, but I'm better than Moses. Sometimes when God is cooking up something, his cooking is better than your mom's. My grandma, when she came with that macaroni and cheese, I can go to almost anybody's house, but I just eat it, and I'm like, no, I ain't. <laughs> Praise the Lord, happy Sabbath, but it just, it, just ain't, it just ain't hitting me. It just ain't good. You know, I ain't going to tell them that in the face. You know, they're going to be good food. But I ain't going to tell them, you know. But I just knew in my heart that, man, it just it wasn't, as, wasn't good as mom's. This is the people, Moses is the person when they grew up hearing about. This was their hope. Jesus says to himself, like even Moses, your hope, he testifies to me. He says, look, since you guys don't believe, I'm going to take what you trust in so dearly, I'm going to flip the script and I'm going to do better than he ever did. Amen. I'm going to do better than he ever did. Sometimes God brings us in situations and say, look, you thought your mother you thought that job, you thought your network, you thought these different things, you thought your degree brought you into this game? No. Mm -hmm. 
I got to take that away from you to show you that I'm your decree. I got to take your mom away from you to show you that I'm your provider. I got to take that network around you to, away from you to show you that I'm your connection. That everything is found in me. And with this whole situation, God is supremely showing that he is the provider. That he should be, that he should be dependent on. Sometimes God, think about it. What has God taken from your life and placed himself in? What is he when, when, when did he do that? Yes. I remember my, when my father passed away. My father passed away, and we didn't have the best of relationship, but I just loved him being a strong role model for me. And as I became a Christian, many of the stuff that I found out about as far as manhood, I got from the Bible. I got from the Word of God. I got from mentors that God brought into my life. It was almost like God was saying, look, your father's not in the picture anymore. However, when your father fails you, when your father's not in the picture anymore, when your mother fails you, when your job fails you, when your boss tells you you're fired, when so many different things happen in school, when so many people stress you out, I am all that you need. I'm enough. You're probably going through some things and God is taking some things from you and you are not comfortable. You are not comfortable at all. But it's through that time that you find out, man, God is truly all I need. And sometimes he got to bring you through a situation in which you're not at all comfortable. And when God cooks something up, he cooks better than your mom. Amen. He does better than the best thing that you always had trust in. So don't be surprised when God takes and strips something from you that you held on so closely to. A job, a degree family member, a habit, something that you held on so closely to. Don't be surprised if God does that because he wants to show you that he's better. And the fourth tip, fourth tip and the last one. These people now, they're going and they're getting fed. 10 to 20,000 people are getting fed right now. And God he is simply, like, through Jesus, he's doing some amazing things through these people right now. The disciples, you got to kind of think about the disciples because they're looking and they're seeing just this stuff multiply and multiply and multiply and multiply. Now, if this is your first time reading this, you would think that this is the part of the miracle that was the end. You'll think that that's a good read and, you know, I'm good with that. But if you read this a few other times, you'll realize that Jesus doesn't stop here. After Jesus fed feeds 10 to 20,000 people, you would think that he would say, I, I will stop. You would think that he would say, that's enough. But don't get it twisted, because when God blesses, he goes all in. And this situation is not any different. When he gets done blessing these people, he has so much food. At, the, at first, they said, that, look, you, you don't even have enough money to get a little bit of food to these people. By the time, time he's done with his miracle, they have so much food that they fill up 12 baskets. Because sometimes when God blesses, he leaves leftovers. When God is cooking something up in our lives, he leaves leftovers. Let's be honest. Many of us have asked God to do some things in our lives, and he turned around, and he didn't do just a slight blessing. He, did, he wasn't stingy with the blessing. But he did more than you could ever ask or think. You needed God to bless you the job, and not only that, not only did he give you a job, but he gave you one with just the right pay. Yeah. When you needed to pass that class, not only did you pass the class, but you got one of the highest grades. Yeah. When you asked God to get out of that crazy mess, not only did he do that, but he put you in a better life situation. Yeah. That's because when God blesses us, he's not trying to bless us just for one event. He's not just trying to change our lives and he's out. But God is trying to leave enough for leftovers. He does over and beyond. God is that provider. He's that help in the time of craziness. He's an escape from our guilt. He is the resurrection to our life. And not only that, but he does all of that exceedingly abundantly above that which we can ask or think. Think about it in your life where you ask God to bless you and he did even more. Amen. Think about that time when you asked God to bless you a few years ago and now you're sitting right here benefiting from the leftovers that God has given you. Because God will do a lot and today I just want to praise him. 
by just not being for a God of the new beginning, not being the God of second chance, not being a God of provision, but being the God of leftovers. Amen. Thank you, God, for that damaged attitude and changing my attitude when I just asked you to stop me from cursing. That's leftovers. Thank you for making me a spokesman for freedom when I just asked you to be, allow me to be free from that addiction. Leftovers. Thank you for giving me the, the best husband or wife that I ever could have got when I, I just asked you to get me out of that relationship with that clown. <laughs> Leftovers. Thank you for giving me peace and joy and an entirely new life when I just asked to be saved, God. Yes. God, I didn't need it, but you gave me so much more. Yes. And whenever you get a blessing, whenever you get a answer of prayer, don't just think that it's a little bit. God has so much in that, and sometimes we won't even realize until we get to glory exactly how much God has for us. When God blesses us, he gives us leftovers. Amen. Amen. When God cooks some stuff, yes, yes. cooks when you can't cook. Amen. Yes. Yes. Cooks when you can't cook. Yes. When God cooks, he uses little in the kitchen. When God cooks, he cooks more than your mom. He cooks better than your mom. But also when God cooks, he leaves enough for leftovers. That's how good our God is. Yes. Amen. I don't know what situation you're in, but I honestly just wanted to have that real talk session. When you can look at that particular situation, whatever you're going through, and speak to it and say, God is cooking up something. Amen. Yes. God may be allowing, may be cooking up something and putting you in a situation where you can't do anything yourself. He may be doing it when you only have limited, small resources. He may be doing it to show you that he's better than the thing that you always lean on and your handicap or your crutch. But rest assured, when he gets done with the blessing, when he blesses you, when all is said and done, you can be rest assured that he has enough blessing that will last you for days. I just imagine... I just imagine what the disciples did with those baskets of food. <laughs> because we can shout about God blessing us so much that we have room enough for leftovers. But is it so that we keep the leftovers to ourselves? One of my best things about being at Andrews is like, man, when people have a pile up and they just have too much food, they realize they can't eat all of these leftovers. So I call a friend up. I say, tell me, man, like, you got any leftovers? And she's not stingy with her leftovers. She comes and brings it. <laughs> and I'm thoroughly blessed by her leftovers. <laughs> Other friends after after Sabbath, oh, look, everybody get done eating. Like, they, they call me up, you need some food, you need some food, you need some food. I'm like, bring the plates, bring them all, bring the plates, just bring them. <laughs> However, could it be in the Christian life that once we get blessings from God, we don't share our leftovers? We come to church and we bask in the fact that God has blessed us so much, but we won't help that person that's in need. God has completely changed our lives, but we won't talk to them, sit down with anybody and talk to them about how we changed our lives. God has blessed us abundantly from some stuff, but we won't pull somebody aside and bless them because we've been blessed. Man, God blesses us with leftovers, but it's my firm belief that he doesn't bless us with leftovers so we can eat it all. So think about... What leftovers have God called you to share? Because, man, we're looking at the story, and at the beginning of the story, we dealt with the people in the desert place that was in need of food. And we end the story, we end up with a bunch of people who have so much food that they really can't even contain it in their stomach. What will you do with the leftovers that you receive in your life? You may need to pray about that thing. Sometimes it's a struggle for me to, it's a struggle for me, man, to get some of my leftovers. I'm like, 
Man, I just got blessed. I just got this nice check. I'm about to make blessing stew. I'm about to make blessing pizza. I'm just cutting up all the leftovers. I'm just making all kinds of dishes with the leftovers. I'm doing all kinds of stuff. And I'm just keeping it to myself and being selfish. But I challenge you guys, this upcoming week, think about what God has cooked up in your life or is currently cooked up, cooking up. And once you get through that thing and God has blessed you with leftovers, I challenge you to give that to somebody else. It may be a encouraging word. It may be a few dollars. It may be just counsel. It may be just driving around with somebody and blessing them just with your presence and just having somebody positive in their lives. But I challenge you to share, share, share your leftovers. Let's pray. Definitely, Father, Lord God, you are cooking up something and you are cooking up something right now, each and every one of our lives. Just because things aren't bad in our lives doesn't mean you're not cooking up something. So God, we just praise you for whatever situation you have us in, God. It's always for our better. It's always for our good, God. And God, we know that when you're cooking up things, Lord God, you do it at times when we cannot cook up anything ourselves. We have no strength, God, and we're in so much need. You do it also with limited resources, God. That means the five-minute prayers are the little dreams that we had that we just wrote on a piece of toilet paper, Lord God. We believe that you can do big things through that if we just continue to stay with that and wait and push through, God. Just like Russell Douglas did with Mike Tyson, God. God, we also realize that we have crutches in our lives, God. Some of us have things that we're so dependent on, God, and we thought brought us to the dance. We thought made us as successful as we are. We thought made us as blessed as we are, God. And some of those things, God, when you're cooking up something, you're taking some of those things out of our lives to show us that you're much better than that and that you are enough. And, God, when you're done with blessing us and cooking of things, Lord God, you leave so much more, God, so not only that we can be filled, God, but that through our testimony and the way we live and how we give, Lord God, we can be a testament to somebody else. We can be a testimony to somebody else. A testament of your grace and your love. So, God, we thank you so much for cooking up things in our lives, God. And we ask right now that you change and tweak our hearts, Lord God, so that we may be able to share our leftovers, God. And as we share our leftovers, just like the people had to tell a story of how they got the leftovers, God, allow us to be able to tell a story of Jesus, who when we had nothing multiplied stuff in our lives, and now we have so much of the front. And probably for many of them, the front, that'd be the first time they hear about God in a sensible manner. God, continue to be with us. Continue to bless us abundantly. Continue to give us a heart to give once we have been blessed abundantly with all leftovers. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.